Hi, this is Deb from Deb Stays Designs and I'm back today with another spring project. Today we're making this cute flower pot holder. Perfect for brightening up your kitchen for spring or summer. Before I get started, I publish new content frequently, so be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And check out the blog at debsdays.com where you find plenty more sewing and crafting projects. And my Etsy shops where you'll find the written version of many of my projects with step-by-step -step written instructions, color photos, and the printable templates. And since these are digital download patterns, you can print them off and get started on your next sewing project today. I've added a link in the description below this video. Alright, let's get this project started. Along with your regular sewing supplies for this project you'll need fabric for the front, for the back, and for the applique, fabric for an optional hanging loop, cotton batting or insulbrite, a paper-backed fusible web like Heat and & Bond, and don't forget the printable templates. First, trace the individual parts of the design onto the paper side of the fusible web. Cut out each piece about a quarter inch outside the tracing line. Following the manufacturer's directions, fuse the pieces to the wrong side of the appropriate colors of fabric and let them cool. Then cut out the pieces along the traced lines. Remove the paper backing from the fusible web, center and arrange the applique pieces on the front fabric. Fuse them into place. You can add stabilizer to the back of the main fabric if you'd like. Then finish by stitching around the raw edges of each of the fabric pieces with a blanket stitch, a zigzag stitch, a satin, or a straight stitch. I like to try out different stitch lengths and widths on fabric scraps before I work on the applique piece. Place the backing fabric with the wrong side of the fabric facing up. Center the two batting pieces, or the batting and insulbrite, on top. And place the applique piece on top. Baste all layers together and quilt as desired. Since we'll be folding over the backing to make the binding, don't sew past the front fabric piece. Then without cutting into the backing fabric, trim the batting to match the front of the pot holder. Then trim the backing fabric so it measures one inch away from the front fabric. To create the binding, fold the backing over so the raw edge meets near the raw edge of the front and press it. Fold the backing over one more time so it becomes the binding on the front and press it. Work your way around the sides, pressing as you go, and use fabric clips or pins to hold it all in place. Then top stitch around the outside of the pot holder near the open edge of the binding. Now if you prefer to miter the corners, use the technique we've used before. Measure one inch away from each corner and mark it, and then draw a straight line to connect the marks and cut on the line. Fold the raw edge corner over the corner of the front fabric and press it. Fold one of the sides so the raw edge of the fabric meets the raw edge of the front and press it. Fold the backing over one more time so it becomes a binding on the front and press it. Fold the other side in so the raw edge of the fabric meets the raw edge of the front and press it. Fold the backing fabric over one more time so it becomes the binding on the front and press it. If you'd like to hang up your pot holder, let's make a loop. Fold the fabric strip in half lengthwise with the wrong sides of the fabric facing each other. Press to make a crease and open it back up. Fold one side to the midpoint crease and press it. Fold the other side to the midpoint crease and press it. Fold the entire piece over and press it. Top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around and across the fabric strip. Fold the strip in half to make a loop. Place the raw edges of the loop on the top of the back of the pot holder between the top stitching and the edge of the pot holder. With the loop facing downward towards the pot holder, pin it in place. Secure the loop in place by stitching over the pot holder's previous top stitching. Press the loop up. Stitch across the loop one last time to hold the loop in the upward position. And just like that, you have this cute flower pot holder to brighten up your kitchen. If you'd like to see more projects like this one, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out the blog at debsdays.com, or visit my Etsy shop, Debs Days Designs. See you next time with another project.